Bear Station Nation. I'm here with head baseball coach Mike Laird, and we're doing a 2022-2023 season preview. Uh, how you doing today, coach? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you. Um, let's get right into it. Last year, had a mediocre season, what, finishing 25-21. Yeah. And, um, not too bad. Um, a little bit of struggle from the season prior to that, when 33-18 yep. the year before that. How you just feel last season went overall as a team? Well, we got off to uh, – we, we played a lot of very, very close games. Yeah. I think about 50% of all of our games were either a one- or two-run game. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we got going uh, towards the middle part of the year, we were we were doing a little bit better. But what really, uh, unfortunately, what kind of got us uh, in a bad way was uh, three – two of our pitchers, actually, and our, our best senior returning pitcher got hurt in the weight room. Yeah and basically almost didn't even throw all year and he was kind of our number one guy yeah and uh brian thomas actually got hurt in the weight room the same exact night and uh, he threw 78 innings for us but he was not right for quite a while so unfortunately i'm not trying to just say that was the reason but it was a little difficult trying to you know put piece things together from the pitching staff standpoint early and uh when brian got back healthy things were going a little bit better but um, yeah, Tyler Gregory, he, he just, uh, he was our number one guy coming back. He almost didn't pitch all year. Yeah, that's tough right there. But, uh, let's get into the um, depth of this year's team. Um, let's go start in the infield. Um, talk about first base. Who are we going to have there? That's probably going to be Tim Jean again. Tim was a gold glove guy last year. Uh, made, I think, honorable mention all conference. Big energy guy. He's not your prototypical, if you look at him, first base type guy. He's not... Um, He's, he's a lean guy. He's a very fast guy. He's a base stealer. Yeah. And most first basemen aren't base stealers. Uh, but he's very good. And he'll hit uh, probably second in our lineup. He's an RBI guy. He's a, like I said, he can steal some bags. Uh, real heady, real high energy guy. So, yeah, it'll be probably it'll be Tim G. Oh, yeah. Talk about second base for him. Second base we've got, uh, got a couple guys there, but it's more than likely going to be uh, Frank Aparicio. Frank's been here three years now. And uh, he is, he's really solid, very, very solid. I'm either going to hit him probably lead off or maybe a nine hole, but, but Frankie is, is very good. He's, he's, he's just real solid. He's, uh, you know, if we can get a little bit of more offense out of him, he'll have a very, very good year. Okay. Let's move over to shortstop. Shortstop's going to be Nate Jessel. Nate is a gold glove from last yeah. year. Nate can flat out pick it up and throw people out. He's, uh, He's a very, very good defensive player. Uh, I'd like to see his stick come alive a little bit more, but he he's as good as they get mm -hmm. as far as defense is concerned. Oh, yeah. And I know this is something that not a lot of people think about when you're thinking about middle infielders, mm -hmm. and that is, uh, I mean, particularly in the spring, wherever we go, or even here, you're going to play with a little wind. And Aparicio and Jessel both are just, I mean, you hit pop-ups, and these guys are going 100, 150 feet and catching yeah. balls that you wouldn't expect middle infielders to get to. So they bring that to the, to the plate also. But if Nate has a little bit better year at the plate, he could have a, he's going to have a good year, real good year. Now let's go over to the hot corner. Who are you going to have there? You know, playing third base, it ain't easy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Um, Justin Martinez, uh, he's an interesting cat. Yeah. Big guy, athletic guy. He looks real good in the uniform, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, he came in here a year ago from Kirkwood. Mm -hmm. And Kirkwood is a you know real, real strong uh, JUCO program, obviously, out of Cedar Rapids. Uh, he has a lot of tools, good arm strength, big guy, bat speed. I mean, he's got an exit velo somewhere around 106, 110 miles an hour. I mean, when he squares it up, oh, yeah. it, it stays hit for a while. Um, and we've worked on his defense. And one thing that really needed to, he didn't hit all the time for us, didn't start for us all the time last year. But one of the reasons was he struggled at the plate a little bit. And I'm not a big launch angle guy. Yeah. You know, I don't teach guys to lift the ball mm -hmm. a lot, especially out here with the wind and everything else. Plus, you gotta be pretty strong to do that. Yeah. Not everybody's uh, like Aaron Judge. You oh, know? no. And uh, so I think, you know, Justin came in with that philosophy that he needed to lift everything. And, you know, when you do that, these junior and senior pitchers in the Hart Conference, they go, okay, we'll give you one of these yeah, and one of these good. and one of these. Down the way. Down We're not going to give you that pitch you want to lift. Mm -hmm. And so he, um, 
he was a swing and miss guy quite a bit, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And I see him, he's made some really good adjustments at the plate. I see him being, uh, he could have a huge year. Yeah. And we need him to have that. Yeah. yeah. All right, now let's transition. We'll come back to your pitches and catches later. Let's transition to the outfield. Left field, losing Tanner Bedeer, a uh, big player out there. Talk about left field for us. Yeah, Tanner wasn't very good for four years for us. <laughs> he only hit 400, you know. <laughs> First team academic All American, you know, big deal. No, Tanner, yeah, we, we obviously are going to, you know, how could you not miss a guy like him uh, and the leadership yeah. that he brought to? Uh, probably a guy that came in, his brother played for me, and his brother was a, and you know, don't read too much into this, his brother was kind of a stud, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. He yeah. was a player, and, and that was uh, Blair Speets' brother. Uh, Blaze Speeds was mm -hmm. here uh, for the 19, con we were conference champs in 19, probably would have won it, I think, in 20, had we not had the COVID shutdown. Yeah. But his brother uh, was a D1 transfer from Jackson State. Okay. And his brother could just flat out go get it in center field, 6'4", 210, he could run like a deer. I mean, this guy was good. He's yeah. still playing some, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, professional baseball right now. But Blair is the younger brother, and I remember Blair back in the old days visiting, you know, with Blaze and his mm -hmm. family, and he was just this little skinny guy. Well, now he's here. Yeah. And he transferred in from um, Iowa Lakes up in northern Iowa. Um, he's from the St. Louis area, and he does. He's not as big as Blaze, but he can run. Yeah. Uh, he's mechanically very, very sound. Hits from the left side. He, he's a baseball kid. Oh, yeah. He's a baseball guy. And he's potentially could hit leadoff or nine also for us. So he could run. Okay, now let's move over to center field, losing your gold glover and Alex Fisher. Yeah. Talk about that. Um, Abe Arroyo. Abe is a tools guy, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. He's got some tools, and uh, he can run, throw, hit, and he will more than likely hit in the three hole for us. He's got power. He's got average. I mean, the thing scouts look for are can he hit for power, can he hit for average, can he play – position defense, can he run, can he throw, yeah. those four or five things. And he can do all of those. If he stays healthy, he's his Achilles heel uh, has kind of been some hamstring issues. Yeah. And if he can stay healthy, and, and uh, our trainers have been doing a great job with him, trying to make sure that, he, that we're ready to go. And so we're going to have to watch him, but he can do it all out there. Okay. And he's got some pop. He's very serious. He can also do short game stuff, uh, you know, if he needs to. So he's just a very solid all-around player. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Now let's finish it off with the uh, outfield with right field. Who do you got in that position? Well, we got a couple guys out there. As you know, we lost all of our yeah. outfield seniors. Um, Jamison Hart was there last year. Uh, we got a couple guys. A guy that came in the second semester, uh, Joel Bulgin, uh, could possibly play out there uh, or catch. Mm -hmm. And uh, Holguin's a very good utility player, real strong kid. Uh, so he could possibly be out there. And I've also looked at, uh, we've kind of moved um, Dooley, Trevor Dooley, oh, who really? played a lot of second base yeah, last year, he did. is uh, not quite as laterally quick as Aparicio and Jessel. And I thought, what do we do? His bat, he hits from the left side, his bat plays, but we need to. And so we've been working him out in the outfield, and he's doing pretty well. So it'll probably be between Dooley and Holguin if he's not catching. Okay. Okay. Now let's go back down to the infield. Let's go to your catcher. Who's going to be behind the plate for you this year? Well, um, we got a guy that's um, Dylan Schrock has been here for about f for four years, mm -hmm. and Dylan's a little bit undersized, uh, but he's one of those kids, one of those guys that has just kept working and working and working, and he's kind of he's shown some big improvement between last year and now, and he's got a shot of, of being in there. Um, also, this freshman that transferred in, yeah. big kid, um, and Leland Riley, Leland Riley the second. Mm -hmm. and Leland is a Leland is uh, only a freshman, yeah. but he is a big dog, man. This kid's um, all of six one, maybe six two, about two fifty, and uh, he's got some hammers on him too. <laughs> and the kid has a really good sense of how to hit. He doesn't try to overswing. He goes with the ball. He can drive the ball. Um, 
he'll get a chance to hit some, and he's decent behind the plate. He played for a guy that played for me, actually, Sean, Sean Sears, mm -hmm. played back in the late, mid-90s, something like that, and he was his high school coach, and Sean did a nice job with him because uh, that kid, uh, Riley, is, uh, you know, as a freshman even, he's got a chance to play some. And then there's Joel Holguin I talked about. Joel is a very good athlete, real strong kid, got a 90-mile-an-hour arm back there. Um, he's had some uh, hip flexor issues, okay. you know. Just he just came in second semester, so uh, it's one of those three guys gonna okay. be playing back here. Got a shot to play back there. Now let's talk about what every baseball team would want, and that's a pitching staff that could take anybody on any day. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about your pitching staff. Well, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the teams of the heart have a couple of these guys that are in the nines you know yeah. they're like 92 to 95 guys As a matter of fact i think mount mercy's got a couple of 96 97 mile hour guys uh we don't see that i haven't had guys i've had a lot of guys drafted here over the years mm -hmm. from william penn we've had some pitchers make it up and pitch in the majors yeah. so we don't have that animal anymore we mm -hmm. don't have that guy uh we do have uh, and I, I'm happy with this. We do have several guys that are going to be in that 84 to 88 range, mm. and uh, they've they've got a lot of innings under their belt on the college level. Yeah. And so their experienced guys probably won't make a lot of mistakes. We got to pitch backwards a little bit once in a while because we're not going to blow a lot of fastballs by some of these some of these guys. Yeah. Uh, but well, I think we'll be smart. And I think we've and we've got depth. That yeah. Last year, the the depth thing killed us with the guys that got injured early. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we can put people in play early in the count. Our defense is good, and I think we're going to score more runs too. Yeah. So, but we've got some guys back there. Uh, Brian Thomas, of course, threw I think seventy eight innings last year. Even and he was just the kind of the workhorse of yeah. it. And he just he's gotten better every year he's been here. Ty Harder's out of Galesburg, mm -hmm. Illinois. Ty, this is his third year, and he's the same thing. Um, good attitude, guys. Uh, Stetson Denning has been here now four years. Oh, yeah. Good key reliever guy. He can also play a little bit of infield if necessary, but he comes in and he's a strike thrower. Um, Nick George. Mm -hmm. Nick uh, was kind of, uh, almost became kind of our number one guy about the last half of the year, and then he kind of, you know, we kind of rode him too long, yeah. uh, so to speak, and we had to had to kind of shut him down. But Nick's uh, sol very solid. Nick will be good. Nick will also probably do some DHing from the left side when okay. he's not pitching. Yeah. Uh, a guy named Ron Coney came in, a graduate student, and he's been very, uh, very effective. And uh, as a reliever, he, he should be good. And Matt Schober is also here as a graduate student. Uh, he's one of my GAs. Mm -hmm. So I got about a half a GA and a half a player there. Yeah. But he's a very, both those guys, uh, Ronconi and Schover, they both pitched 55, 60 innings last year. So they know, you know, they got a feel for the game yeah. and a lot of experience because they're older guys. So also Camden Anderson's a big old guy from Galesburg. I look for him to make a jump. He came in as a freshman in the fall and he was touching 90. He's a big kid. He's like 6'4", about two, 215. And, uh, you know, had some control issues a little bit, but I think he's worked those out so we could see him out there quite a bit also. That's really good, really good. Now, let's talk about the expectations of the season. You know, the Hearts a good conference when it comes to baseball. And um, how do you feel just a team will play out this year going into conference play? Well, you know, uh, our offense was not good last year. Our defense was very good. I think we were the top of the league or tied yeah. for the top of the league. Uh, our pitching was adequate. It wasn't great. It was somewhere in the middle, but we were we were in games. Yeah. We just didn't get the job done at the plate. And some of it was situational hitting. Mm -hmm. Some of it was we didn't get guys moved over when we needed to. Uh, you know, I try to convince these. Well, we try to convince our guys all the time. Win situations, win the offensive and defensive situations, and that uh, that means execution, yeah. and that means get people over when you need to get them over. You know, get a guy a third with one out so you can score. And a lot of our games are seven inning games, so they go quickly. Yeah. And if you don't do some damage sometimes in the first two or three innings, you might be thinking maybe we should have done that in the fifth or sixth. It's getting up, it's getting late. late yep. So I think we got I think we our guys are bought in. I really do. I think our all of our guys are bought into 
doing what we need to do when we need to do it. Last year it was a little little painful once in a while, yeah. and it was a little bit a little bit frustrating. We didn't get some things done when we should have got them got them done to score some runs. Yeah. Well, no doubt, Coach. You know, thank you for sending on this interview with me. Um, men's baseball would be in action this Friday, February tenth, against Southwestern. They head down there to play them. Well, good luck on the rest of the season, Coach, and um, good luck on the first game. Thank you very much.